Okay, good afternoon. Thank you everyone. Thank you for joining the session. And we begin shortly. Thank you very much. We'll give a few minutes and after a few minutes we'll start the class. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Good afternoon. We'll take a couple of minutes and then we'll start the class in a few minutes. Thank you all. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Good afternoon. Sitara, good afternoon. <clears throat> Thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining the session. And we'll begin the class in a couple of minutes. Couple of minutes, and then we start the class. Thank you, everyone. Good afternoon, Sweta. Good afternoon, Adi Lakshmi. Good afternoon, Suparna. So thank you, everyone. Thank you all. One more minute and then we'll start the class in one minute. Thank you. Thank you all. <clears throat> Good afternoon, Ajapa. Good afternoon, everyone. So let us begin now. So before we start the class, as we always do, so anybody has any question, whatever we discussed yesterday and whatever we've discussed before. So any question on anything, whatever we have discussed so far. Good afternoon, Alasifa. Okay, so as we always do, before we move forward, we will recap what we did yesterday. Yesterday, we did exercise and we focused on a topic called inclusive bonus quantity. So free goods was the topic yesterday. And then in that topic, we did several exercises related to that topic. We did few iterations as far as free good is concerned. So first iteration, which we did yesterday was related to with something called inclusive 
bonus quantity. So the first exercise which we did was related to inclusive bonus quantity, which basically means if you buy 10 pieces, you pay for nine and the 10th is for free. And we did that whole exercise and 12. <clears throat> Then second exercise which we did was related to exclusive bonus quantity. So that basically means if we order for 10, you pay for 10, you get 11th with a free. So exclusive bonus quantity we did in two different ways. One, we when the 11th item is the same item as 10. And then we did another exercise in which 11th item is a different item. It is possible that you buy a laptop and you get a mouse for free. <clears throat> so we did the, uh, that uh, variation. And the last exercise which we did yesterday was related to bonus quantity with one line item. We don't want two line item to appear in the sales order. We want one line item to appear and then we apply the discount in the background and then ultimately customer pay only for uh, remaining quantity. So these are the topics we covered yesterday. So thank you all. Good afternoon, Chaudhary. And good afternoon, everyone. And thank you all uh, for joining the session. So, who we have on the phone? So, we have uh, Isra, good afternoon. Suparna, good afternoon. Kenna, good afternoon. Gurleen, good afternoon. Adi Lakshmi, good afternoon. Sweta, good afternoon. Sitara, good afternoon. Ajapa, good afternoon. Alasifa, Gustav, uh, good afternoon. Okay, good afternoon. Rakshata, good afternoon. Chaudhary, good afternoon. Sherry, good afternoon. Rizwan, good afternoon. Syed Khan, good afternoon. And uh, Sil Amo, good afternoon. And Mohammed Atya, good afternoon. So, good afternoon and welcome all of you to the class. <clears throat> so, today we're going to start unit number four. We're coming back. So, in the unit number four, we will do the configuration. And we will do the configuration of the sales document type. Now, what so in this topic, we'll talk about what is sales document type, what does the sales document type do, what kind of function sales document type control, etc. 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 So that is what we will be discussing and talking about. So if you go back to the different scenarios which we have covered in our class, right? We create inquiry. Document type inquiry is IN. Document type for quotation is QT. Document type for standard order is OR. For rush order, it is RO. For cash sales is CS, and so on and so forth. So all the different 19 scenarios which you have done, <clears throat> for each of those scenarios, there was a separate document type. So each of those scenarios, had a different document type. So that is why the document type is important. The IN, QT, OR. Now, what does this document type controls? That is what we will be discussing, talking, and configuring in this unit. So when we talk about the sales document structure, so first make a note. So we have a um, sales document structure. So what is the structure? A structure basically means how data get stored in sales document. That is what this basically means. Okay. So sales document has three layer buckets of data. 
Now, what is that? So make a note. So there is a header data. And that is what the unit number four is about. There is a line item data. That is the unit number five is about. And then there is a, a schedule line data. And the schedule line, that is what the unit number six is about. Okay. Sales document type header data applies to entire sales document. For example, customer. So when you're getting a sales order, you're getting a sales quotation or rush order, or any kind of sales document for that matter. In any of these sales documents, you can only have one customer. You cannot have a five customers. So sold to party, the main customer will only be once. So that is why customer is a example of a header data because it's unique. Then we will line it up. We can have multiple line items. So in one sales order, we can have a multiple line items. An example of a line item is a material. So in one sales order, customer can give me order for multiple items. Item one, item two, item three, material one, material two, material three. So in one sales order, we can have many, many different type of items okay now we have a schedule line data so a schedule line is a subdivision subdivision of line item for example Delivery date. Delivery date is an example of a schedule line. So we can say that to the customer, you are ordering item A. Out of item A, you need 100 pieces. But out of 100 pieces, 60 pieces we're going to supply on next week. And the remaining 40 pieces we're going to supply on following week because we may not have the whole material available on the same time. Or maybe possible we have a one time but one material can have a multiple schedule lines that basically means potentially one material can be delivered entire quantity in one time maybe in two time maybe three time maybe four time so multiple line items for a material is possible now when we talk about the header data so header data is controlled by Sales doc type. So there is a sales document type which controls header data. Item category is controlled by item category. And then we have a schedule line that is controlled by schedule line category okay now that is the unit number four this is the unit number five and this is the unit number six so there is a one unit dedicated to each of these so sales document type unit number four, which we are discussing today. After that, we're going to discuss item category, which is unit number five. And after that, we have a schedule line category that is unit number six. So these three keys, these three parameters, these three other configuration elements, which are relevant for defining the nature of the sales document. So 
we will be doing the configuration of all the three. We're going to do configuration of sales stock type, configuration of item category, configuration of a schedule line category. This unit is about sales document type. So that is what we define here. So in customizing, you have a sales document which can have a sales document type for header, item category for line item, schedule line category for schedule line. And then in the customizing, sales document type controls the behavior of this document at the header level. That is what we wrote it down here. Control sales document type, control the behavior of the sales document at the header level. Okay, sales document type controls the behavior so separate blood point sales document type sales document type controls the behavior of sales document header. I would like you guys to make a note of that statement. So sales document type, control, header parameter, header data. <clears throat> So this whole unit number four is dedicated to defining sales document type. That is what we are discussing and talking about. That is what we have here. This is what I was describing a minute back. So header data, the sales document data has a header, line item, schedule line. So let us say I go to, let us say sales document. I go to sales order VA01. <clears throat> I enter the document type OR, sales organized 1000, decision channel 10, division 00. zero. Like, this is like entering any customer order we have entered before. So we've created a sales order multiple time. And we select the customer, for example. So I select a customer. So any customer which we created in the past or we created or used in the past, we can use it. So we select a customer, hit enter. Hit enter. And then we go to material. So we select a material. We can select the material which might have created in the past. <clears throat> Enter. And we select a material. Any material. Select. <clears throat> So roughly this area on the top side, this is called header data. And this is called line item data. So you see this all item, any data below this line is a line item data. Any data above this line is called header data. 
so customer can only be one this payment term in quote term all these data which you see in the top side all these fields are called header data or header field and all these different fields which you see here they are called line item fields now where is the schedule line so if we double click on it and then we can go to schedule line this is the schedule line in the schedule line we can enter delivery date in the delivery date we can enter other information okay <clears throat> so now this is the schedule line which define the delivery date okay that is what this basically means and that is why we have a delivery date here go back so we saw header data this is line item data and we saw schedule line data okay that is how the whole data is constructed and divided now header data is controlled by sales document type which we just discussed that is the unit number four item data is controlled by something called item category that we're going to discuss and then schedule line data is controlled by schedule line category that is another unit which we'll be discussing okay that is what we will be talking about and discussing about okay now in the sales document we can have various functions we can have a partner determination we can have a pricing in incompleteness free good determining the material transferring the requirement to the demand management when the material will be delivered output tax so various functions happens takes place in the during sales order processing okay that is what this basically means okay. i would like you guys to make a note of this parameter these two line which i highlighted The sales document type is not completely configured until we have processed all necessary basic functions. So sales document type controls various functions. For example, pricing. Now we go back here. If you look at my screen, if you click on this button, this will take you to header detail. You see this, this button, this is a small icon. If you click on it, it will take, you see that it's in the top of header data. Now all these different tabs, sales, shipping, billing, payment card, accounting, and all that, all these different uh, information is related to header data. This is all header data. And if you go to sales, and on the top, we have something called pricing procedure, RVAA01. How does this came we didn't enter it right somehow this has something to do with document type so that is what we are saying that header controls different parameter one of them is what kind of pricing you're going to get so this pricing procedure which i highlighted rba01 
came automatically in the configuration. When we are doing pricing topic, we will talk about this configuration also. This is actually one of the important configuration when we are doing pricing topic. Somehow this RVA1 came. That is what we say pricing procedure, output procedure. Output basically means when you're going to print. So there is a separate uh, video only to describe output. Output basically means you like to print different kind of a document from SAP. You like to print a sales quotation. You like to print a sales order. You like to print in a bill of lading. You like to print in a customer invoice. So if you're sending invoice to the customer, you like to print it. Like when you place an order to an amazon.com, when you open the box, you also get some document, you get a packing list and all that. Similarly, how do you print all those documents? You print them using output determination. That is controlled by doc type. All documents, all sales document in SAP are divided into four categories. Now look at here. The first is pre-sales. Second is the sales. Third is the agreement. Fourth is the complaints. Pre-sales basically mean that inquiry quotation, we did that. So that inquiry and quotation is part of pre-sales. We did all these pre-sales, we did both. Then we have a different sales document. OR is for a standard order, RO for rush order, CS for cash sales, CS for fill up, FD for, we did many more actually, they're not all. We did many other uh, four document type we did uh, basically only for consignment. These are all called sales document. Then we have agreements. We did that exercise also in which we create a, you know, contract, we create a scheduling agreement, we create a, a, a contract, uh, quantity contract, value contract. So different type of contracts and agreement also we did exercise. So that is a third category. Then we also have returns and complaints. So we did that also RE. RE means return when customer want to return the order. <clears throat> CR, credit memo. Subsequent delivery when we have to give a replacement item. DR means debit memo. So all these different documents, we have a 2 plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, and 7 plus um, 4, uh, 11, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 16 we did actually more so we if we see our list in uh, our exercise we did 19 different type of uh, uh, sales scenarios but ultimately all these sales scenarios are divided into these four categories pre-sales before sales sales after sales and agreement so all sales document divided into these four category sales document type represent a sales process so when we say all these different 19 doc type these 19 doc types represent 19 different sales scenarios they represent 19 different sales scenarios that is what this basically means uh, inquiry means this is one sales scenario Quotation means this is another sales scenario. Delivery means this is another sales scenario. Consignment. These are all different sales scenario. So, each doc type, each doc type, represents a business scenario. So inquiry is a business scenario. Quotation is a business scenario. Sales order is business scenario. Contract is a business scenario. Consignment is a business scenario. Rush order business scenario. And all these scenarios which we covered in the class 
any project anywhere in the world these are the scenarios which will be used of course there going to be slight modification and all that uh, some combination permutation for the specific requirement for the customer but ultimately we are talking about these 1920 different scenarios so all these different scenarios <coughs> are the one which would be used in the real world so these are the scenarios which would be used in any project there will be variations of it there will be slice configuration and all that is specific to that company but ultimately these are the scenarios which will be used everywhere that is what we are talking about so each sales document type represent a business sales scenario now what does a uh, document type controls so it control many things okay it controls many things so for example so it controls following there are many others but they are some of them so first and foremost number range so what is the starting number what is the end number you might have noticed that um, inquiry is a different number range quotation is different number range sales order is different number range <clears throat> returns is a different number range credit memo debit memo is a different number range now number range could be internal or it could be external internal basically means which system assigns so in our case we have used internal so when we create all these different sales orders and quotations contracts and all that all these numbers transaction numbers was assigned by the system automatically based upon the number range external basically means manually assigned by the user so business user assigns it so that is what the number range basically means it also control determination of pricing procedure it control determination of business partner procedure it controls determination of make a note in completion procedure it controls determination of delivery doc type it controls determination of billing doc type it controls item numbering it controls purchase customer po determination it controls item category determination and others there are others also but these are some of the important parameters which are controlled by sales document type so if you see the what does the sales document type controls so these are some of the important parameters controlled by the sales document type make a note of all of them
make a note of all these parameters these are interview question people can ask you during interview i will be asking you my mock interview what is the purchase document type controls this is the one of the question okay so each document type is a business scenario that is what we do reference mandatory yeah there is a reference mandatory reference mandatory remember um, we did that exercise of reference mandatory like um, when we were creating subsequent delivery free of charge order when we enter it it gives you a pop up window it giving me a pop up window where it is asking me to enter some previous other orders so that was an example where we had a mandatory reference means subsequent delivery free of charge is not allowed or is not possible unless we are able to do or we allow subsequent delivery free of charge that's what it basically means so that's why we have a reference mandatory so these are different parameters controlled by sales document type that's what we see here changing sales document type you can change the current document type using a document processing so when you are entering a sales document type let us say you are entering a standard order yeah when you are entering a standard order after that if you want to make it a rush order then at that time you can change the document type because when you are entering order customer change his mind he say no no i don't want regular order i want rush order we can change it that is what it basically means changing the sales document type but once you deliver the product you can't change it but during the order entry you can change it unless it is being delivered that is what this basically means there is also if you look at it here there is something called you can also define two alternative sales document type for each document type which is alternative sales document type 1 and alternative sales document type 2 now what is the meaning of it meaning of that is basically like that um, we um, are basically can define we can have alternative sales document type which basically means we can define multiple documents so when you are entering a document type let us say standard order we have a two more choices so let's say i want to go to rush order we can choose different order after that i want to change maybe let's say cash order i have another okay so that is why we have two alternative alternative one and we have alternative two so we can do two alternative sales document type <clears throat> now this is the menu path so if you see wherever in this uh, pdf we see img wherever there is img that basically means that is a menu path for the configuration so there is img img means implementation guide and then you go to sales and distribution sales document type sales document header defined document type right so where it is so first and foremost for any configuration we have to go to we can go to tools customizing img img means implementation guide spro so we go to spro okay so we go to spro then we go to sap reference img then we have a sales and distribution
then we have a sales. Then we have a sales document type. And there is a sales document header and defense sales document. So this is the menu path where we can define sales document type. If you click on it, and we have all these different order type. If you go to position, we have OR. OR is the standard order. And then if you go scroll down, then you have all these different order types. These are all different order types which are there in a standard ACP in the box. So we go to OR. If you want to create a new one, you can select copy and we first letter G and Y and the last letter could be whatever. Hit enter. Is this entry also relevant for copy control? No. Hit enter. Hit save. Now we get a customizing request. So whatever you have configured last time, that will appear here. If you have not done any configuration before, then nothing will come here. If you want to need to do a new configuration, then we hit the create button. And then here we can say, create sales doc type Z020. And we save it. And we hit enter. So what we did, <clears throat> so configuring a new sales document type. <clears throat> so any configuration happens in SPRO, so we create configured. new sales doc type call g020 by copying or using or we have configured a new sales document type <clears throat> it will take few minutes to copy because a lot of data in the background it copies it can take some time to copy all information. It can take few minutes. So now we come back here. We hit enter. <clears throat> these are some of the table T184, TVKZ, TVACP. These are the tables and we save it. Now this Z020 has been created. If I want to make a, new, a, a change, the a name, a change of this document, we can change it. We can recognize. And we save it. So now we want to verify, <clears throat> verify sales document type Z020 because that's what we configured. We select that and then we go into the detail. <clears throat> So here, <clears throat> so first and foremost, this is a document of Z020. And uh, we see the sales document category. 
and C. C basically means sales document. They're different category. A for inquiry, B for quotation, C for orders. And then contract is G, returns is H. So different doc type defined into different sales document category because we are getting a sales order. So this is C. C means it is a category order. Then we have here uh, number range 0, 01, 0, 02. The first is for internal and second one is for external. So we have a 0, 01. Now, what is the 0, 01? So if you verify the number range, and uh, here we have a defined number range for sales document type. If you go there, <clears throat> if you look at the interval, so number range 0, 01 is start from the number 1 and it goes to 111 and this is the current number but if you see here is a 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 it's a 10 digit number so 10 digit basically means if we want to have you can create billions of orders actually because 10 digit will create will means millions and millions and millions so the current current sales document is 16489 if you go to the next one it will be 490, 491, 492. So it keep going. So this is the number edge. <clears throat> and if you go to sales document type, if you define sales document type here, let me go back again. And we go to G020. We double click on it and here we have a document type z020 there is an item interval so let's say we we have a 10 20 30 if you want to make it rather than a 10 but i want to make it 5 you can do that here there is an enter purchase order number yeah so that basically means system is asking you to enter the purchase order number Check item division, change reference document, check commitment date, means PO date, do not maintain commitment date, consider agreed time delivery, check that date. There is a something called document pricing procedure indicator A. This indicator A is basically linked to how the pricing procedure get determined. So when we're talking the pricing procedure, we will talk about this indicator A. This indicator A helps. Remember, we talked about this doc type RBAA01. So how the pricing procedure get determined? One of the parameter is this indicator. Then here we have a quotation message B and outrun message B. Now, what is the meaning of this B is? So that basically means check at item level. Quotation message means if for that material and customer, if there is a uh, open contract, give me message. If there is an open quotation, give me message. Because if I'm creating an order, and if that order, if there is a quotation, which I don't know, system should tell me that there is a quotation. System should tell me there is a contract. So this is what basically by this to give the message. And then we have here something called delivery document type. So when we get a delivery system automatically take delivery document type from here, LF. So all deliveries which you have created related to standard order, this delivery type LF was used in all of them. Okay. Then billing document, delivery document type F2 was used in all of them. <clears throat> delivery time in four days four days basically means that when i'm getting an order today it will take minimum four days to deliver if i want to check it i can change say i want minimum 10 days or whatever it is that doesn't make a difference and then we save it so all these different parameters are controlled by the sales document i will look at the number range and all these different parts if I want to see, if I go to sales order, for example, so 
if I go to VA01, and if I go to OR, and rather than OR, if I want to type here Z020, and hit enter. So we entered Z020, enter the customer, hit enter, enter the PO number, enter the material number, enter the quantity. So now what we did, we did a testing. So we created an order Z020. So what we are doing, verify says, doc, uh, says document zero configuration. So we did that, what it configured, control. Secondly, we verify or we do the testing. In the testing, what we do? We create a sales order with the reference to uh, for sales order using this doc type e 020 using transaction code VA01. Okay, that is what we were trying to do. Let's do it again. So we go back. So we go to VA01, right? So we go to VA01. So there's a logistic here. Sales and distribution. We go to sales, order, VA01. Okay. Now here, I put my order type Z020, correct? We have a sales document type 1000, distribution channel 10, division 00, and I put my doc type Z020, hit enter. Then I enter my customer, hit enter, enter the PO number, enter the material, enter the quantity, and uh, then we save it. See the message in the bottom. Extended order Saad 16490 has been created. This is the order number. So that basically means whatever configuration we did that configuration worked fine so sales document type configuration which we did worked fine whatever we did worked okay so that was the first point we configured and that works okay now So that was the configuration of sales document type. Assign sales document type to sales area. So this is the menu path, header, sales document type, assigned to sales area. Now, what is the meaning of it? <clears throat> and if you see this figure number 31, sales area and sales document type. Now, what is the business meaning of it? Business meaning of it, like we saw in a top down, we had a many, many sales document type. Do we want the sales document type for all sales areas or we only want in certain sales areas? So we have a choice. Now, what is the meaning of it? So that will, let's say I have created a sales document type today, Z020. Now my company is in US, my company is also in Canada. And now I can say that, okay, my sales document type Z020 will be used in the US, but not in Canada or vice versa, use in Canada, not in US, or use in both. So assigning sales document type to sales area basically means we can configure that the sales document type which we are defining, that sales document type can be used in what all different 
sales areas some of them few of them all of them so we can assign relevant sales areas to the sales document type so only those sales areas can use those sales document type exercise six configure sales document type which we did and um, now I have a good news. So good news. What is the good news? So we're going to take 10 minute break. Break is the best part of the class. In the whole class, what is the best part? Break time. So 10 minute break and we'll continue on the next topic, which is item category. So we'll take a 10 minute break now. And after 10 minutes, we'll go to the next topic, which is sales document. Okay. Uh, why there is a need to configure it? Because of business requirement. So if there's any business requirement, we want to be standard is always there. We need because all those different parameters is controlled by sales document type. Remember pricing partner determination, incompletion procedure, all those different parameters are controlled by sales document type. So if your business requirement is there to have a change in any of those parameters, then what will you do? You will con configure a new sales document type, okay? So it whether you configure or not, it depends upon business requirement. Everything depends upon business requirement okay so now we will take 10 minute break and we will continue after 10 minutes okay thank you everyone and um, we'll take a 10 minute break thank you
Okay, I'm back now. Thank you, everyone. So, so let's begin now. Before we start, do we have any questions, concerns, anything, whatever to discuss today? Any question on whatever we discussed today? Or before, if you have any question. Okay, if there's no question, we continue to unit number five. So last unit, we talked about sales document type. Sales document type control header parameters. Unit number five, we're gonna talk about item category. So what is item category? What does item category control? How the item category get determined? And what does what are the different functions controlled by item category? So if you look at the sales document which we just configured, uh, the sales document which we just created, in the sales order, if you see here on the line item, we have an item category TAN. Now, how does this item category TAN came? We didn't enter it. Somehow that item category came. So how does this item category came in the sales order line item? So number one, what is this 10? What does it do? Because it's there. Secondly, we didn't enter it. It came automatically. So because it came automatically, then how did it came? So those are the two things we're going to discuss in this unit. So that is what is the objective of this unit is. What is item category and how does the item category get determined? In the later part of the thing, we will also talk about bill of material. In SAP, we can also have a bill of material. So we're going to do exercise on bill of material. So how do we create bill of material? And how do we expand that bill of material in the sales document? So we will be doing this um, exercise in both. So we have here functions and customizing of item category. So first, what does the item category control? What functions? Second, what are the different customizing elements? So we, as we discussed before, item category controls various line item parameters. What are those line item parameters we're going to say? To control various line item parameter in the sales document. That is what we have. It's a four digit key maximum. So you can have a less than four digit, you can have a three, you can have a two, but maximum it is four digit key. Sales document type is also four digit key. Now, item category it is mandatory in a sales document. That basically means we cannot have a sales document without item category. So without item category, we cannot have a, I, uh, we cannot have this um, sales document type.
so that is the it is mandatory in a sales document we cannot have a sales document without item category item category is there in all sales document type inquiry quotation sales order contracts agreements complaints returns all document types all those 19 scenarios we talked about all of them all of them will have item category you cannot have any of these sales document without item category so you will always have item category how can we go and check this item category so here this is img sales and distribution sales document sales document item define it this is the menu path again because it is an img img means implementation guide that basically means it is in configuration what is the transaction code for configuration spro sparo sap key paro sap has its own paro that is called spro every functional consultant need to know about this paro otherwise you become devadas and you know what happened to devadas in the last so we go to img so this is a display img this is the configuration now here we go to sales and distribution we go to basic functions uh, sorry not basic functions. we go to sales so we go to sales and here we have a sales document item and here we have a defined item category this is where you can define item category this is the menu path now where it is it is as a part of sales and distribution sales sales document sales document item define item category that is the path which you see here sales and distribution sales sales document sales document item define item category and that is what we see here sales and distribution sales sales document sales document item define item category if you go here and if you see there are so many values now standard item category is what standard item category is 10 so 10 is a standard item or is a standard order 10 is a standard item category a standard item but item could be a different type item is product so you may be selling different type of product a standard item basically means regular item a standard item which you are using in your day to day life that is called a standard item so we select that and then we hit copy button and then let us say i put z 0 20 if i want to copy hit enter z 0 to 21 20 already exists okay so we go to 21 if we check so oops we go to spro i exit out actually we go to sa reference ng and uh, sales and distribution sales sales document sales document item define item category and we have all these different items. six so many of them so many item categories are here these are all standard and all these which you see in the z and y all these z and y are basically different custom 
which has been created by different people over the period of time. All of them, is it Z, 21, 24, whatever. So we go to position here and we select the standard, which is 10. And then we select this. We hit copy button. And then we select Z022. Hit enter. Is this copy also relevant for copy control? No. We'll talk about copy control also. And then we hit save. And then we hit enter. And then we hit enter. Then we hit save. So now what we did, we configured an item category. So what we did. So we item category configuration. Now in item category configuration, what we did, we configured configured item category Z022 by copying a standard which is 10. Now I want to verify item category attributes. So what are the item category controls? That is what we want to understand that what does item category controls actually. So we, if you go here, if we select this and we go to the detail, this is Z022. The very first thing it control is the billing relevance. You see the billing relevance. A, A means it is billable. So it control billing relevance. So, billing relevance. Billing relevance basically means whether we want to bill this item or not. Now, why will you not bill it? Remember yesterday we talked the free goods. So like in case of free good, you may not like to bill the free good because it's free. So you can decide whether this item can be built or can be not built. Second, it control pricing relevance. Pricing relevance basically means whether we want this item to be priced or not priced. So yesterday we were talking the free good. Like in free good, price get zero because of free good. And because of free good, so system make the price equals to zero. So that is why it is called pricing relevance. So that is what basically pricing relevance means. So we have pricing relevance. So this is pricing relevance. Another thing which you see here is a schedule line. So there is a, a schedule line. A schedule line basically means whether we can deliver or not. Whether we can deliver it or not. Now what is the meaning of so, for example, you are selling a laptop. So, laptop is a physical product. So, laptop will be delivered. But let us say you are also selling a service of laptop. Now, service for laptop is service. It's not physical. So, there is nothing to deliver. So, item is there called repair, but is not relevant for the billing. So, that is what this basically means then an item could be there, but it may not be relevant for the schedule line or delivery. It may not be relevant for billing. It may not be relevant for pricing. You can also have a partner procedure at line item. So line item pricing procedure is controlled by item category. It also control incompletion procedure. What is incompletion we'll talk about? So incompletion procedure it's controlled by
एट लाइन आइटम कंट्रोल बाय एंड मेनी अदर मेनी अदर थिंग्स दे आर नॉट ऑल बट दीज आर सम ऑफ द इंपॉर्टेंट वन so that is why item category is important because it controls various feature at a line item level i would like you guys to make a note of that so take your pen paper kagaz kalam dawat and make a note of all these bullet points which i am making okay that is what we see here and few other things also pricing billing whether we can do credit or not schedule line at time business item whether it is relevant for business item or not completion rule under what condition this item will be considered complete or not incompletion log partner procedure tax procedure all these different parameters are controlled by item category so all these these are the different behavior different nature of the item and all this nature and behavior of the item is controlled by item category this is where we have defined item category item category so these are all different parameters relevant for pricing relevant for billing and all that which we just looked at it so these are the various parameters pricing billing delivery schedule line and all so these are all different parameters which you see in the figure 33 that is what we saw in configuration these are the all parameter which is controlled by item category and these all parameters are related to item related to item behavior these are the different item category so now item category would be in all sales document inquiry will have item category quotation will have item category order will have item category free of charge will have item category consignment will have item category all the 19 orders all of them will have item category you cannot create any sales document without item category any of them okay how does item category get determined so we saw in the last sales order we had item category 10 right how does item category get determined this is another interview question i will be asking this and if you have interview you will be asked this question how could we ask this question how the item category get determined item category get determined based upon these four parameter which you see in the figure 35 we going to see that table now we go to configuration also so here we have something called assign item categories we click on it and we have all these entries i go to position i put my sales document type which is 020 so we create a sales document type 020 and we scroll is scroll is scroll is scroll and we look at this entry for example okay now let us understand let's look at this picture here this is the first so there are four column column 1 column 2 column 3 column 4 column 1 sales document type column 1 sales document type column 2 item category group column column 3 usage column 4 high level item 1 2 3 4 four columns okay 
that is what we have four column one two three four the first is sales document type second is item category group item category group come from material master second is item category group then we have a usage usage basically means in what purpose this item can be used some of the places this this is blank because it's not mandatory then we have a high level item high level item basically being used in case of bill of material we'll talk about that that is also blank and here we have a default item category 10 and because this is here that is why in the last order we had item category 10 now i change it to z022 so what i'm saying is if my sales document type is Z020, if my item category group in the material master is norm, then my default item category is Z022. Then we save it. Then we save it. So what we did? So verify item category attribute and then we config item category determination now i want to create a sales order so after doing all this i want to create a sales order so we want to create a sales order so i go to va01 i put my order type z020 and I select any of my customer. Enter. Enter my pure number. Enter my material. Enter my quantity. And now, see here, item category came this time Z022. Last time we had a 10, TN. This time we have a Z022. Z022 is what we configured. And now we get to see Z022 because the configuration which we did. So that is how item category determination takes place by four parameters. Okay. I have a, a wonderful news. What is the wonderful news? Class is over. We'll talk same time, same place, same channel, All India Radio. So who we have on the phone today? So thank you all. We have today, uh, let me just go through. We have Israr, Suparna, Kena, Gulleen, Adilakshmi, Sveta, Sitara, Alsipa. Okay, Rakshita, Chaudhary Heather, Sariar, Sari, Rizwan, Ziad Khan, Cyril, Mohammad Hatia, Mohammad Mudassar, Varun, Kisu, Avani, Mohan Sheikh, Aisa, Sridhar, and Dominic. So thank you all for coming to the class today. And we will talk. Next week, same time, same place, same channel. All India Radio. Any question before we depart? Whatever we've done so far. Thank you for session. Share the reference number also for the reasons. Okay, thank you, Sari. Thank you, Chaudhary.
any question anybody has before we depart is a question time mere sawalon ka jawab do question 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 thank you thank you chaudhary thank you um sita thank you everyone and please check uh, you email on my homework assignment i will check it thank you for session thank you for kind word uh, sharia sari thank you thank you everyone so if there is no question then we are done i hope you all have my phone number and email so this is my email address dsadatmightthinky.com this is sonal this is mohit and this is my email uh, this is my mobile number 9738857245 so you can call me email me whatever is convenient to you which i publish in all classes i'm sure you have all this information but just in case if you don't have it okay thank you very much please take care of yourself um on thursday we have uh, thanksgiving so i um, wishing you all wishing you all a wonderful thanksgiving and um also wishing all happiness to you and your family so thank you very much and talk to you next week on saturday thank you for now take care bye thank you